use a TCA protein yeah, for yeah, sweet potato. Yeah, I'm to mm -hmm. We're going to mm -hmm. take us to the yogurt. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, cookie cell. Uh, what the, what's the outside of yeast cell? The membrane. Uh, membrane? Okay. What's outside of, uh, what, outside of membrane, is there something else? Plasma, or no? Plasma. Yeah, that's inside. I don't think you used to have it. You used to have it. Uh, this is plasma, plasma membrane. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. it's cell membrane. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Uh, you, this is not a curveball question though. You can kind of Google find out. Uh. <clears throat> so what's outside of a membrane? Yes. Air. Uh, say it again? No. Uh. <laughs> I was just kidding. It's me, uh. <laughs> it's not well, it has to be... Um, Google it? Oh, Google. Yeah, you can Google it. Uh, what is an outside of So what is biology and what is biology? Huh? Uh, biology, biology. What's a biology? Okay, okay. Is that only a two options? I didn't put my, I didn't put one of my own. Yeah. I'm not taking the It's only one. Which is why they cell wall. That's right, there's a cell wall. How? Yeah, It's not like a plant, is it? What is it? East. A eukaryote. Oh. Very good. And uh, we are going up towards the phylogenetic, more than deeper than eukaryote, right? So, so but that's right. East is the. Uh, yeah. Bacteria, archaea. Eukaryote. You care, that's right. So East is somewhere here. But uh, what is East? It's a uh, protozoa. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. That's a yeah. Joke. I know you're kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm looking. Yeah. It, it's related to cell wall, right? So so. Uh, what is the freaking I don't know. Yeast is a yeast. Why am I looking at that? Based on this figure, yeah. plant uh, and fungi, the distance is this. Is that shorter? Here is much longer. Uh -huh. 
So the fungi and the plant, at least these are here are closer. It, actually, we need we need to talk about different uh, specific species to make that general. But uh, yeast, yeast is a general cell model. It can be used for animal, but the cell model is also can be all, for all most of the cells here, including plants. So, but yeast have cell wall. Uh, what's inside here? Nucleus and nucleolus. Is that not a nucleus or nucleolus? Uh, nucleolus is the uh, It's nucleus. the middle. Yeah. yeah. So it's the nucleus, right? That's the nucleus. Right. Uh, where do you think the MSH2 should be located? In the DNA, which is inside the nucleus. Yeah. So the DNA should be there. Right. Uh, so, so MSH2 should be here. MSH2 mm -hmm. should be here. Protein should be here, but where is protein uh, translated? We are, we went over this. Yeah. It's translated. Where where is the protein translation occur? Translation. Yeah. Where is the translation occur? We went over this. We did. Oh. <coughs> yeah, it's cytosol. That's the. So transcription occurs in the nucleus. Translation occurs in the cytosol. That's right. Yeah. This is where translation occurs. So, so the MSH2 protein will first translate in here. But where is the mismatch DNA repair occurring inside our nucleus? It has to be a chromosome DNA. So the MSH2 has to be imported into nuclear, that's called import. And usually uh, in eukaryotic system, uh, protein when they are translated into nuclear, there should be something called the nuclear localization signal. Nuclear localization signal. What's the partner of MSH2 doing mismatch repair? I'm Excellent. Yeah. So this also MSH6 should also go inside of the nucleus. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, MSH6 has three nuclear localization signal, but MSH2 has none. So what does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so so. If for, for protein to be trans, transported into nucleus, it needs a signal, but MSH2 doesn't have it. How did that happen? How, 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 did, how did the MSH2 actually be transported into nucleus then? Transport RNA? Just kidding. It's, if something has to transport, it's a, something to transport it from the cytosol to the nucleus, right? Right, it's called info. So but I, I thought it was like a, um, yeah. like a little vessel or something. No, uh, for nuclear transportation, there are nuclear uh, pore, uh, nuclear pore uh, on the nuclear envelope, so they have all this. So how does it get through the nuclear pore? Yeah. Nuclear pore. I don't know. Uh, Well, there are several options. One is we still, there's probably a nuclear localization signal on MSH2, but it's just not the one we know about it. That's one option, right? It, it probably has, but we just don't recognize it. I mean, we are certainly far from 100% knowledgeable. There's also a second choice. We know MSH6 has one. Three. Uh, MSH2 has three. So MSH2 and MSH6, they actually form. They could come together? Yeah, they form dimers, so they can co-import co it. That's just another option. 
In fact, uh, you can do experiment to see which one makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, if you want to do experiment, how do you do this experiment? Mm -hmm. If you want to see whether MSH2 is imported into nucleus together with MSH6, how do you do this experiment? <coughs> which mutant are, are you going to use? Which, which, what kind of mutation you want to generate? <coughs> what kind of mutation we want to generate? Like right, right. a frame shift or something? Or a, a specific type? Yeah, specific type. So like the ones we use in class? No. Like, yeah, like we did in class. In, in class we uh, mutated uh, some amino acid to different way in MSH2. Right, so if you, if you, if you are given the job say, well, I want to, uh, my hypothesis is MSH2 is imported into nucleus because they form a dimer with MSH6. How are you going to prove that? What's, what's your way to prove that's the case? Uh, which part you want to mutate? You want to mutate somewhat in MSH6, right? You can also mutate, you basically mutate the nuclear look at this on MSH6. If you remove that, you see MSH6 won't be imported into uh, Together, MSH2 will, should also be. Oh, so if there's a mutation, MSH6 won't move. So if if MSH2 is in the nucleus, but MSH6 isn't, that means okay. I get it. so that yeah, means yeah, okay. very good. Yeah, yeah. So you see the basically you have alternative models. If MSH2 have an independent nuclear localization signal, we just don't know. If we mutate MSH6. MSH2 is still going to be imported. If they co-imported, if we mutate the MSH6 localization signal, and both will be stopped. Mm -hmm. Neither should be imported. If, if I mutated the, the nuclear localization signal on MSH6, then it depends on which model. Right? So if MSH2 has to be imported into nuclear by binding uh, MSH6, then it won't go. Right? But if it do, does not need MSH6 to go into nuclear, then it will still go. You see the graph. So, yeah, so see, by doing some experiment, by, by making some mutation in some place, you, you actually can figure out which, which way it should work. Right? So, okay, so that's actually. Uh, <coughs> Uh, part of the background of this, uh, but today we want to isolate the MSH2 protein from cell, from um, all those cells still growing. I think actually that's for uh, tomorrow, but we our cells are already ready. <laughs> those cells are growing for tomorrow. So, so what should we before? How can we isolate those protein from cell? Don't you have to break down the cell wall or the cell membrane first? Yes, how do we break that? Uh, read the protocol. Which step do you think are doing that? We, we have a protocol. <coughs> right, so the first step of turn on cell culture, right? So, <coughs> see, basically we have all those flasks growing there and a cell are growing there. So they are shaking for days. Uh, that's the step one. Uh, Uh oh. Unfortunately, there are two steps. <laughs> so, <laughs> then, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm the, uh, okay. So basically, cell were first growing in flask, and then uh, we put them into a, a, a small tube and spin them down. Spin them down the cell. You have a cell at the bottom now, and remove the supernatant. Uh, 
this uh, actually this is uh, somewhat between step one and step two. Okay. <coughs> and then uh, move this to a small open buff tube. The pilot, we need the need the pilot. I need the pilot in different color, maybe. And the cell is also purple cell. Purple cell. Let's make it clear. So the purple are cells. <coughs> but then we uh, resuspend in one mil. One mil cold water. <laughs> Basically, uh, spin them down, uh, re suspend all the cells in one mil cold water. And, and then we add what? You have to have a buffer, right? Or um, just getting, yeah, at a base, tri base, two molar. Okay, uh, tri base. Uh, no, this is a step number four here. Uh, oh, so add the. Um, Under 60 microliter sodium hydroxide and the magnificently smelled thing at the uh, Macastro ethanol. Okay. So what does this uh, What did y'all say out there, Dr. G? What? What did that say? Oh, too small. Uh it's basically step number four here. Oh, so you did put 160, because that looks just like 60, I don't know. Right, 160 microliter. Okay. Uh, sodium hydroxide and beta and capital ethanol. Sorry, maybe I should use bigger. In fact, the the uh, the cuticle, mm -hmm. when when they are feeding the cell, they are feeding in this step in one mm -hmm. of water. Okay, I see. In fact, uh, all before this, the cuticle has done this for you. So this is where this is what you will receive. You will receive this cube. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so so. You, in fact, you start by adding 160 microliter ethanol plus beta macapital ethanol. <coughs> so then we uh, at the room temperature 10 minutes. Uh, why do we have to do this? To separate the DNA from the cell, or to break down the cell membrane. Mm, how could how could this do that? So do have just a bit of a capital ethanol. Wait, it's yours. You say room temperature, but this says on ice. It's RT. So oh, wait, I I I give you a coffee. Oh, I do want the room temperature. No, 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 room temperature. RT. Oh, I was looking at this wrong side. Yeah. I skipped this. I, I, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, okay. I see. So in this part, what does phase of the capital ethanol does? What does it do? Yes. Yeah. What does this do? Oh. What? Oh, what? Yeah. Why do we, after add this, why we leave at the room temperature for 10 minutes? You asked the question about it. 
Oh, uh, here, I uh, come back to this one. What does beta metacapital ethanol? Okay, it says it reduces disulfide bonds, so aren't there bonds in the um, membrane? Yeah, so there's a lot of membrane protein there, so it's, so it's releasing the membrane, it's breaking down the membrane. And sodium hydroxide is also probably uh, uh, breaking down the wall and the membrane. Mm -hmm. so the cell wall. Uh, at least make them very thin, yeah. where we can extract the DNA. Yeah. So we, we leave it at room temperature of 10 minutes, just make sure. Is it because color. when it's cold, it contracts, and when it's warm, it expands, or does that have nothing to do with it? Because uh, I'm still not understanding why we're leaving it in room temperature. Oh. Uh, usually, when <coughs> it, uh, in fact, when you boil it, it's probably even better. We basically want it to break. Because it breaks the bonds, yeah. right? Yeah. Heat yeah. breaks the bonds. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So if we boil it, probably even better. But so if we want to uh, denature all the protein on um, ice, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, so we change that to a temperature. Okay. <coughs> so it's to break the bonds. Yeah. Um, so but most chemical reaction at a high temperature is going to occur faster than in low temperature. So <coughs> after this, and then we add uh, 160 microliter TCA, 50% TCA. Uh, what is TCA? That is trichloroacetic acid. That's actually a highly uh, caustic thing. So Dr. Q actually will do this step for you. So and, and you also want to avoid spill this, especially if you don't even have a glasses. Don't don't spill this. Uh, so after I, because it's a highly caustic. <coughs> So after that, <coughs> and so we are adding uh, acid to our kind of basic solution. This could to be uh, acid and basic neutralization reactant. Some heat will release. So this time we put this one on ice for 10 minutes. Okay, so this will be put on ice 10 minutes. This one will put on ice. We have a prepared ice for you just read. <laughs> okay. Someone had to run to get a bucket of ice, I think. No, the ice is right here. Oh you right here? Oh okay, sorry. I, okay. <laughs> I guess Dr. Hill could prepare everything. I just haven't seen it. <laughs> so. <clears throat> okay. After this, uh, <coughs> we need to spin them down. Down. Now, where do you think the cell will go? Is that the bottom or in the super? Uh, the protein go at the bottom or in the supernatant? The bottom. Okay. It should be at the bottom because we have added all those uh, 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 denaturing things. Protein are now it's not a complete denature. They become a uh, uh, in a non-functional state, so the, the protein should now go to the bottom. The pellet, in fact it should be a white pellet, uh, but if I can see it's all white, you won't see it. So here, the purple, the purple one is the protein, and so the... And the supernatant should be thrown away. Supernatant threw away, and the purple one is what we want. So, how do I make it the more important thing? So here you cannot, uh, mm -hmm. I'll say, how do I make it? Okay, a big experiment. <laughs> if I want to emphasize, this is what you want. Uh, yeah. This just to oh, uh, throw it away. Oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. 
Uh, in fact, it should be a white pellet. Uh, protein should be a white pellet. What's purple, you said? The purple is a white pellet. Oh. I, I just cannot draw a white pellet. Uh, <laughs> I'm a white one. <laughs> OK, so. <clears throat> all right, so then we, uh, we, we threw out the way. Uh, And we have the white pen at the bottom. And then we add the uh, 75 microliter electrophoresis buffer. So, and resuspend everything. Uh, And then, oh, we, we, uh, we did uh, our 15 microliter neutralization. Uh, no. Yeah, We add 15 microliter, okay. We did not have titrates in the five time. Okay. It may take less than 15. I see. So, yeah. And then we uh, neutralize this. After this, this should be uh, resuspended in a liquid. Uh, I guess it should be. Mm -hmm. And then we want to make this into blue by adding. Buffer. Uh, <coughs> so you want to uh, uh, add uh, three times five microliter. You may just take uh, ten, but until this turn blue, I guess. And then we're going to follow this. Uh, how do I draw a fire? Yeah. Uh, okay. We will boil this for ten minutes. No. Uh, should should they then chew it on ice? That doesn't matter, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, sit it down. Then the protons can just spin and down. That's good. Yeah. Well, since we are the, all the proteins are denatured, so what that we just spin and down. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Even if we chew it, it's still going to be denatured. Yeah. So, okay, then we just spin down again. So frustrated. Yeah, concentrate them. The protein now should be at the bottom. Uh, why <coughs> why do we think we are doing this then? Well, boiling denatures the pro I mean the uh, membrane, the bonds in the membrane. Yes, boiling will further denature in protein. There's actually another important step here. That neutralizing? What? You talking about when you neutralize it? Uh, As a you know, okay. yes. Uh, I forgot to mention this, this part also has something mm -hmm. called SDS. SDS is here, right? Uh, SDS is here. Right? Yeah, so, so this one has SDS inside. What is SDS? Can someone Google for it? Student for a democratic society. 
That's what I said. Sorry, that should be funny. Maybe I should put SDS protein. Sodium dot. Okay. That's. So. This is basically. This is basically soap. SDS. Yeah, SDS basically soap detergent. So it has a uh, so since it's a sodium, that means the long chain part should be negatively charged. So the protein. <clears throat> so the purpose of the SDS is to also break down the membrane because soap is a base that breaks down the or the stuff from your hands, right? The bacteria from your uh -huh. hands. Yeah, yeah. But the the SDS here. Those are already done here. So the SDS here is just uh, is actually <coughs> so the protein usually uh, sorry. protein have actually a lot of charge. So positive charge, positive charge, positive charge, positive. And it also has negative charge. Negative, negative, negative. So protein actually have a lot of different charges among them. But what the SDS does is it's going to uh, basically cover all those proteins uh, with all this uh, SDS, SDS. And then since this one has negative charge, this is the entire protein will become all negative charge. Basically, uh, shield up is basically going to make sure all the protein become a, a highly negatively charged uh, 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 thing. In fact, uh, since it's completely denatured, uh, it also the protein will also become a a, a chain, negatively charged chain. That's basically what this does. So we add the SDS boiler, make all the protein become this uh, random chain with no charge. And then we're going to separate on the gel to see the protein size. So <coughs> this is basically the protocol. Uh, uh, I'm going to check this Okay, are we clear what we want to do?